business owners across Melbourne fear what will remain of their livelihoods once the city's coronavirus restrictions are finally lifted. Many claim the roadmap has sentenced them to failure. We're joined now by Victoria's Minister for Health, Jenny McCarkos. Welcome to the show, Jenny. Thank you for your time. Um, now, business owners say there's no hope, there's no money, the industries, many industries are going to be decimated. How much does that weigh on you? Oh, look, we absolutely acknowledge this is really tough for business. In fact, it's really tough for all Victorians. Uh, this is why we've been working together with industry, with businesses, uh, with unions, peak bodies to look at how businesses can come back safely, um, safe for their workers, safe for their customers. And we'll have more to say about the support that we'll be providing businesses. But we've already, as a government, invested $10 billion in stimulated economic activity, and that includes financial support for Victorian businesses. Minister, we've been talking to businesses, to, to industry, to unions this morning, and they've all said the same thing, that even though they have been talking to you for the past couple of weeks, nothing that they've put forward was in your plan yesterday. Well, actually, the discussions that we had, we had about uh, 30 uh, round tables uh, last week involving peak bodies, uh, organisation, business organisations, uh, unions and others, uh, was about uh, safe uh, plans, uh, industry plans, industry-specific COVID-safe plans for reopening businesses safely in Victoria. Now, we know that, uh, uh, that many may, may be concerned about the, the way forward, but the modelling that we have developed together with two universities, the University of Melbourne and the University of New England shows us that if we go too fast, if we go too quickly, the risk is that we will spark a third wave and that we'll have to put restrictions back um, before Christmas. Now, that won't be good for business. It won't be good for Victorians. We need to do this in a safe and steady way to drive those case numbers down and to make sure we do not risk having a third wave before Christmas. How many people do you have contact tracing now? We've got a team of 2,600 people. That's the biggest contact tracing team in the country. Uh, we've brought in doctors, nurses, uh, medical students. Um, the ADF is also supporting us with our efforts, paramedics and many, many others to assist us in this task. So uh, we think we've got a contact tracing team that's comparable to every other team in the country. Uh, we publish uh, our data through a national uh, dashboard uh, and uh, they have been doing incredible work. Um, you just have to think about the fact that only a few weeks ago we had almost 8,000 active cases on our books, more than 13,000 close contacts. They've had an enormous task uh, and they've been rising to the challenge. We've been supporting them with more resources, more staff, uh, whatever that they need to, to deal with this issue. Because, but of because course, the uh, case uh, numbers uh, sorry, are now starting to come down. Sorry, Jenny, to interrupt, but, but there, are, there are a lot of people, a lot of very influential people in Victoria who say the contact tracing is just not up to scratch. And that's the one area that needed to be improved and isn't. Well, we've had those enormous uh, case numbers, nearly 8,000 active cases. Uh, we just have to recall that only uh, four weeks ago we had more than 700 new cases a day. Uh, yesterday we had 63 new cases. So the enormous sacrifice, the hard work of Victorians is driving those case numbers down and that means that the contact tracing team is also getting faster with its work. The vast majority of cases are now contacted within 24 hours uh, and that's data that we publish nationally um, and, uh, and they will keep getting better at it because of course the case numbers are coming down, they're far more manageable to, to, to track and trace. Uh, we've got outbreak management teams working with industry, working with various sectors, so they're getting um, the getting much, much faster, and that's because the case numbers are coming down. But we've heard this morning that the timeline and the case numbers, they aren't achievable or sustainable. And if you had faith in your contact tracers and the testing system, that you wouldn't need to set such ridiculous numbers? Look, we've had um, the highest number of tests of any state in Australia. We're uh, on a per capita basis have one of the highest testing rates in the world. Uh, we've got an enormous contact tracing team, as I said, more than 2,600 people now part of this team. Uh, and they are contacting the vast majority of cases within 24 hours. If they can't get hold of someone on the phone, they go and knock on their door. So, so they're making every possible effort to track and trace people. But of course, the quicker that people go and get 
get tested if they have even mild symptoms. That means that they will then know that they need to isolate at home and the, and the risk of um, infecting other people is reduced. So we are putting um, every effort into testing, uh, tracing cases, isolating cases. We've got outbreak management teams that go out to workplaces, uh, high-risk workplaces like abattoirs, aged care facilities, and work with those, uh, with those businesses, work with those sectors to make sure they can manage a particular outbreak. So some of the restrictions lifting are dependent on, on, on almost zero transmission mm -hmm. in the community, and, and that's... Uh, the experts say unrealistic. I mean, are you seriously hanging out for that? Look, we uh, we have set ourselves um, some some uh, triggers uh, for each step uh, in this roadmap, and that's based on the expert advice of our public health officials. But working together with a couple of universities, the modelling that they developed uh, showed us that if we went too fast, that there would be a significant risk, um, more than 60% chance of triggering a third wave before Christmas. So we're going to do this in a safe and steady way. That's also a sustainable way. We don't want to see businesses having restrictions put back in place towards the end of the year. We don't want to have to put these restrictions in place limiting our movement as families, as individuals. So if we do this in a safe and steady way, uh, we can bring the case numbers down and then we can sustain that into the long term. And we need to manage this into 2021 until we have a vaccine available in Australia, around the world. We need to keep driving those case numbers down and being able to manage any outbreak we might have and that's what we've done with our outbreak management teams and the resources we have put in place. All right Minister we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you very much. The problem is going to be there that um, by Christmas are there going to be significant numbers of businesses left? You may left? not have any businesses yeah, left it. by then. And you've then got to yeah. look at what are the you know what are the health risks mm. associated with the economic um, shutdown and at what point do they outweigh the actual risks of mm. the virus? We haven't even talked yet about the mental health impact this is going to have. I mean, how many businesses are going to shut? As you say, like gyms, they can't open well, at the end of November at the moment, but only if you've got 14 days with no cases. Mm. I mean, in, we've seen, look at New South Wales, um, and I would think that's the kind of scenario that Victoria should be looking at. Yeah. It is not realistic, and we haven't had a single person on the show this morning, um, any experts from Victoria, tell us that this is workable outside look, of government. And Christina Hearns on Chapel Street, and the, the normally vibrant Chapel Street retail, I mean, retail, restaurants, I mean, mm. the restaurant capital of, of Australia. Mm. I mean, the, the, there's so many jobs, there's so many livelihoods at stake here. Um, a third wave, for sure, uh, is something they can't afford, um, but they've got to get the balance right, and it's through testing. Mm. All the experts say it's through the testing and the tracing, and hopefully mm. they're on top of it now. And I think, yeah. too, like, I'm very mindful that we're, we're not in Victoria and we're not in Melbourne right now and sitting here and, and not passing any kind of judgement, um, which is why we've had so many people on the show this morning from Melbourne, and that's I think that's the sentiment we're sharing. I'm passing plenty of judgment. <laughs> you always do. <laughs>